up guys and welcome to today's video. If you haven't been here before, feel free to get down there and click subscribe. Today is super, super exciting. It is finally, finally the day. South Bend, baby. And Royal Purple Synchro Max. As you know, my truck out there is paired with a G56 transmission. I've got brand new 2017. I got 9,000 miles on it, bought it in March. And the clutch is shot. I mean, it is. It just slips. It doesn't hold power anymore. But buying the G56, I knew going into this, this is what was going to happen as soon as I added any sort of power. So, like I said in one of my previous videos, South Bend Clutch has jumped on our build as a sponsor. So I want to say thank you to South Bend Clutch. Uh, they hooked us up with an awesome deal on this. We will be pairing it with the Royal Purple Synchro Max in my G56. Today, finally the day, this truck is going to be able to lay down some power. This clutch just holds up to 650 horse and I think 1,300 foot-pounds of torque. The stock clutch holds less horsepower than a Mustang could ever put out, so... <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, it holds, you know, less than the stock horsepower on the Cummins motor. They detune them from the factory because the Cummins motor puts out so much, so much torque and so much horsepower that uh, the clutch cannot hold it. That's why they're detuned. Thus, 9,000 miles later, after power has been added, the clutch is shot. So we're going to be tearing the transmission out, putting the new clutch in today, new hydraulics, and new Synchromat fluid. Yes, I'm a little sick. I've been sick all week. Um, I know people are always like watching videos like, oh, I'm sick, but literally I'm sick, so I'm, I'm going to power through this. We're going to get this clutch in. Um, my buddy Tom is going to help me. Obviously, two hands are better than one with a transmission that's over 200 pounds, so um, we're going to head over to the shop and get her thrown in. The last two days... <laughs> It's been extremely warm, like in the high 50s, low 60s, and I got the truck all clean, shined up, and uh, yeah, I'm going to be driving on wet roads. And here we are, the last startup with a regular stock clutch. I'm going to try my best to give you guys some last bit of shifting with the stock clutch. Let me stick my phone under the lens here, keep it balanced. So we've been riding this on usually the 60 horse tune over the past week knowing that this is gonna happen. I've been riding it on the hotter tunes. Truck holds the hotter tunes, normal driving, but as soon as you give it any nuts, uh, it slips. So, but we're on tune three right now. Let's go. I'm gonna try and give you guys the best little quick shifting uh, video I can uh, with the stock clutch so we can um, And then I'll show you a comparison with the, the South Bend when that gets put in. Obviously, there's 500 miles of break-in that need to be done. We'll try our best. So we'll probably be driving it a lot today just to break the clutch in as much as we can. Uh, 500 miles is a lot, and 500 miles is referring to city driving. So for me to drive 500 miles city... Man, that'll be a minute. One of my favorite things about this channel is how many of you are like looking at Rams, trying to buy one, you're like, well, I'm deciding between the transmissions and your videos made me want to get a G56 or G56 owner right here. Um, so in the comments below, if you're a G56 owner or you are looking to buy one, type it out in the comments below. I want to see all of you um, who own, drive, or would like to purchase a G56. Yep, that sure lasted long. Dirty already. Come on, man. All right, obviously here's our seven quarts of fluid and we have our clutch. New throw out bearing, new fork alignment tool, torque specs, and in this box, our new pre-bled and pre-filled hydraulics, which is awesome. So it's pretty much bolt on and go. Under a lot of pressure, I say so. Well, I'll think about all the forces holding back in that big bag Cummins. Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah. Okay. Pressure plate. Just one. Aha! Pilot bearings already installed. Okay, step one is what most people will forget before they put the darn truck on the lift. Um, this all needs to uh, be removed so the tranny drops because this is connected to the transmission and we gotta unbolt this and take this out so we can get the gear shifter off so the tranny could drop through the floor. Take your plastic out here, take the first cup holder out over there. You'll see there's a screw in it. This back one has nothing in it. Screw here, nothing here, and then we'll obviously, you just reach back here and this pops up. Just like that, this will pop up. And then this plastic tray could come out once you get these screws out. Pull that out, disconnect your vent that goes down and in here. And while you're in here, it's a good time to vacuum, clean up any dirt or dust that has fallen in there. But we're gonna get this out, disconnect the shift column, put a rag in it, and we'll be able to drop the tranny out when we get in the air. There it is. Then you move this carpet. Oh, sorry about those eight mils. There she is. Here we are underneath the truck, and here is Big Boy. He's coming out. Cross members got to come out. Both drive shafts. Yes. When I do my lift, I'm probably gonna get these powder coated, but. I don't know why they oxidize so much off the lot, but I'm gonna get those powder coated. On top of that, here's the transfer case. This has got to be removed. Slash, I don't know if we're gonna remove it or just slide it back. And then the uh, rear drive shaft. We're gonna take this off as well. Guys, it always happens like this. Uh, when you're doing a project, you never have everything you need. So we'll run over to O'Reilly's real quick to pick up a 14 millimeter socket to drain the uh, 14 millimeter hex, I guess, um, to drain the fluid in my training because the side to put a drain plug with that size uh, socket on it is a little bit ridiculous, but uh, obviously, always happens. You always start a project and never have everything you need. Speaking of, that's my camera. <laughs> No, this is literally what's going to have to happen because they don't have a hex out there. So we're going to ditch the torps. I was going to be like, what? But whatever. So what had happened was, is they don't have a 14 millimeter hex socket and this is probably the closest thing that fits right inside of a 14. It isn't the best contact but should do uh, the trick slash hope uh, it does the trick. Yeah. Oh, I just hit myself in the face. <laughs> so here's how you know you've been grinding a few gears. When I first started driving this, <laughs> I was hitting a few gears, so uh, yeah, at least it protected that. There it is. Oh. Look at that guys, we see light. There's the inside of my cab. Shit, look at that tripod. Okay, we've got that wiring harness disconnected. Is there any wiring harness on that side? Yeah. Okay, I think everything is off this side connected to the bell housing except the hydraulics and this bracket. Uh, we gotta go down. It's hitting the top. Okay. Start going all the way down at this point. Oh shit. You're fine. Okay, we're not anywhere near the cross number. Ow. Hand is stuck. Okay. You got your hand clear now? Yeah. 
You're just okay. gonna go into the cross member? I guess we could. Okay, good. Now we're three. Oh, look at that, it's beautiful. Is that all the burnt clutch? Yeah, it's your dust. Your dustification. Great. All over the starter too. Might want to blow that off before we get done. Nice. Bitch ass 10 mils on here. You're gonna take all these 10 mils out? Okay. Get that and the clutch disc off. Mm. And then uh, zip the flywheel off. Okay. It's heavy as fuck. So don't let it drop on your foot. Okay. Or fucking hit you in the face. Yeah, this clutch is toast. Look at this. Which was surprising me at how it still drove. But on top of that, all this slippage on the pressure plate, you can just feel it too. But yeah, look at this ma friction material compared to the thickness on that. We get up under here, look at all this clutch material just in here. Look at all the uh, score marks on this from it slipping and burning, coating of just clutch material everywhere. Okay, so those trying to remove this dual mass flywheel, I had to do some reading and research online. However, just to make it simple for some people if they're gonna do this themselves, this plate back here on the passenger side, two 10 mils, and it gives you this hole. You're gonna find your eight bolts to remove this dual mass flywheel. Yes, that's kind of a pain, but that's the way they, uh, Mercedes, I guess, did it. So that's how we're gonna have to get her out. Here's what it looks like. Here's with bolts to the transmission. And then this bolts to this. Be able to hold that for 100 foot pounds? Let's to find out. Ooh, oh, there's seven, there's nine. Looks like you can hold 70. We're almost there. Okay, that's 100. <laughs> okay. okay. Here, put that on top of it. The red marks at the top right corner. And the pinky is stuck. Get out. These nuts? Yeah, I did those nuts. Uh, put the final side on with the ring. All right, guys. Pretty much clutch is in, hydraulics are in as well. If you look up here, got the new hydros in. I'm gonna step on this pile. I'll show you. Yep, hydros are in down here. It's very dark, but connected to the firewall. Reservoir is up here. I'm gonna zip tie the line out of the way so of the um, steering shaft. Man, I got crap everywhere. Um, pedal is connected, now it's time to put the royal purple in because the tranny's already been drained. Plastic console back in and we'll be ready to go. Seven quarts. Look at that, the little bit that dripped on the uh, shift tower there, yes. And you can see it right now. Yes, the fluid is indeed purple. All right guys, well it's back together. I'm obviously in the driver's seat and 
Look at that. Guys, yes, I'm back at home. Uh, clutch is back together, everything's put together, everything is, um, and if you can tell by the um, location I'm at, either I got towed or everything works. As much as I don't wanna end today's video here, um, I'm going to because it's dark out. Can't show you that much, it's hard to do it in the dark, but check back tomorrow um, the day after this video is posted. So if you haven't been here before, click subscribe, hit the bell, hit the bell, so you're notified when I upload this next video. Uh, I'm gonna show you the first, first drive with the, um, you know, new clutch in. I'm just gonna show you the first drive. I'm gonna talk to you all about it, what I, what my feelings are. Um, at, by this face, you know, I could tell you that there's some things that are like, ah, that's just part of a dual disc clutch thing. However, um, obviously truck. It drives great. It drives honestly. It honestly drives great. So um, we'll go over all the pedal, the chatter, all that stuff in the next video. But for now, I want to say thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed that, um, you know, that install video. And check back again tomorrow, uh, the day after this is posted for the first drive video. I'll talk to you all about it. All the chatter, pedal pressure, everything like that. So. I want to say thank you guys for watching. Take care. I'll see you in the next video. If you haven't been here before, please get down there and click subscribe. Thank you guys for all your support. And I want to say thank you to South Bend for becoming a sponsor and hooking us up with a great deal on this clutch. So see you guys in the next video.